some improvements <laughs> to how I, I, I don't know, improvements, but I'm just trying to make it a little more convenient for mounting my little one inch uh, pump. I'm gonna, well, I'm attempting to hire out my quad uh, at least this spring for fighting grass fires. A lot of uh, local fire departments use them, and some of the ones around here can be short staffed at times. Uh, you know, because people work away from town, there's not a lot of employment in the area, um, depending on what you do. And um, so, the best way I found for mounting my pump was on the front rack of my uh, Can Am 800 here. A lot of guys have a radiator up there, but I don't do that kind of mudding. So, uh, what I tried in the past was just using ratchet straps. So, this is the pump itself, it's a Princess Auto one inch pump these are available in canada under the princess auto power fist name they're a pretty good little pump uh the engines don't seem to have a long lifespan because this one's already starting to burn oil and uh when they first started selling them they always had the exhaust that so was coming out the bottom of the muffler so it would you know start to burn whatever it was sitting on so i had a friend i asked a friend what was the best thing and he was going to try and modify this, but the way they have these studs mounted in the head there or in the, the in the casing was kind of stupid. So you couldn't get it all off without interfering with the pump and you have to take the pump off. And it was kind of a big, uh, big deal. So he just went and cut a hole in the top of the muffler and it, it's worked till now. Well, this pump still runs, but it seems to burn a little bit of oil. Uh, maybe it's just a valve that's sticking or something. I'll have to figure out how to fix that. But, uh, you know, you can buy one of these when they're on sale. I've seen them as low as $149.99. And they're pretty popular little pumps. So uh, I'll probably pick up a second one whenever they come on sale uh, in the next little while. Um, like I said, they're a great little pump. Uh, it produces a maximum of about 41 pounds per square inch. I actually put a gauge on there and then I think it delivers almost the same in volume 41 gallons per minute or something around there uh, at least according to their specs I'm not sure how you figure that out without a flow meter so uh, anyway I'll use this pump for now and then I'm going to buy a second one that, as a backup or I'll revert this one as a backup and uh, I'm going to I, I don't have any real metal fabrication skills or not much. I don't have a weld or anything like that, nor, nor do I know how to. So I'm going to take a piece of this three-quarter inch plywood I've got sitting around here. I'm going to probably just zip it from here to here and then just cut the extra piece off. And then I have these old uh, construction serving stakes. I always save these. There's always an extra use for them. And uh, so... I'm going to probably just bolt it into here or into this rack somewhere in here uh, using carriage bolts and uh, wing nuts so that if I need to get to my, uh, like in here is where you hook up your cord for the winch you know, when you want to run it remotely. And so I want to be able to still access here and there's also a fuse panel in there. So obviously, I, as well as a top up for my radiator. Uh, so obviously I want to be able to access that stuff. Uh, the extra lights I put on here are staying on here because uh, these Can-Am machines, this is an 08, so it's what, Gen 2, I think? Generation 2? Uh, 1 or 2, I can't remember. But they have terrible lighting on them. You can't aim the lights or anything like that. So I put these on for a very good reason, not just because I want to look cool and have LED lights hanging off of everything. They are providing a, uh, an important function. So... Uh, so I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and use these as a little bit of a framework or support for this uh, three-quarter inch plywood. I mean, plywood's plenty strong. I just want to have a bit of a gap here so any heat coming off the rad can still escape through the top as well as uh, conventionally. And uh, and also just so that I can e quickly uh, pull the pump off with a couple of wing nuts. I'll just mount it to the plywood there or to a couple more stakes. I'll have to get some more from my buddies. And um, I'm hoping that'll work for now. Eventually that pump, uh, this these Princess Auto pumps, I want to replace it with uh, the Honda equivalent. Only thing is it's about six or $700 Canadian, which is pretty retarded. But 
uh, the Honda equivalent, um, I think it's called a WX10 or something like that. And I was doing the math, um, and it's still a one inch pump. I can't really go to anything bigger, because otherwise I'd go to an inch and a half pump, which will produce even more pressure, especially if it's from Honda. But that's the amount of space I have to work with to put a bulkhead on this tank. It has to be on a flat surface, and that's about as flat as you can get. So anyways, the Honda equivalent produces up to around 50 pounds per square inch, uh, based on the math, uh, on the numbers that you get from Honda. And I believe it because their inch and a half model, which uses, I think, a GX50 engine, that can turn up to like four or 5,000 RPM, maybe with 6,000 RPM, and they produce even more, a little bit more pressure. And if you get a, uh, actually... A pump uh, from Keen, I can't remember what model they call it, but Keen Engineering, they build a lot of sluice box stuff for uh, placer mining, placer gold mining. And you can get a little pump from them, and it's a performance pump, so it produces uh, it produces pretty good water pressure. And I think you can get 60 or 70 PSI. I tend to favor the pressure over volume. And in such a small application where you don't have a lot of space on the machine or weight capacity, uh, that's that's ideal so it'd be nice to have something like a roller pump or something like that or uh, a diaphragm pump that produces about 22 gallons per minute I mean technically you'd use up that whole tank in no time because that's only 25 gallons but uh, those types of pumps can produce I think upwards of 500 pounds per square inch something around there and so you have great knockdown power in, in grass fires and that sort of thing while conserving considerably more water than with a centrifugal pump. So, um, and I have, I have sniffles here because I have allergies and it's cold in my shop. <laughs> and anyway, I don't have COVID. <laughs> but, uh, so that, that's kind of what I'm thinking. And this deal with the plywood might only be temporary. My, my uh, buddy said that he might be able to fabricate something uh, out of steel or stainless steel or aluminum, whatever, uh, that would fit nicer and look a little more professional on my uh, quad here. So uh, we'll see. He just doesn't have time. He's actually becoming a full-time city firefighter and uh, going through all the training for that. Like he's got the job, so he just has to go through uh, all their training. So uh, uh, the best of luck to him. He's been a very good friend of mine. He's the one who pretty much designed and fabricated this whole or ordeal i was sort of like the welder's helper so this is my uh uh you could call it an off-road camper i don't really take it off-road i mean uh, gravel roads is about as far as i go um but enables me and my family to go tent camping without having to sleep on the ground uh, it's got a rooftop tent and then the inside is full of our camping gear and storage area it's got a spare tire. I've got these two toolboxes. Those were from Princess Auto as well. They were all cut down for that purpose. But I've got a separate video about that. Uh, right now, it's all focused on getting this sort of wildland setup going. Um, other setups I've seen in the past, like the local guys, they used to use these little two-stroke one-inch pumps. And I don't think you can get them anymore. I don't see them anywhere because of uh, the carb regulations and all that crap that comes out of the States. But they would just have actually have them mounted on something on here. Like these are just meant to, you know, the plastic is pretty thick on these. But I mean, you don't want to put too much stress on it. But they would have these little two-stroke pumps somehow mounted one way or another on top of these tanks. And it was somewhat more convenient because then you still got some room on your uh, on your front rack there. But these uh, four-stroke pumps are bigger and heavier. So it, you kind of balance out the weight a little bit by... Uh, having the pump on the front there so i just run a short piece of one inch suction line right there it's just draped over my uh trailer like everything else at the moment and uh i always have a ball valve on these uh just so you can isolate the tank and not drain all your water out if you have to take the pump off for whatever reason so it's always a good way to go and this is an ex additional suction line and you can use it as a discharge line I've got the strainer there, so if I need to pull a draft from any sort of water body, uh, you know, it's easy enough to do so. Um, I use these little pieces of uh, uh, construction stakes just to help stabilize this because the straps will hold it very well to the tool rack here. 
but you when you've got it loaded with water you know you got to think water is about 10 pounds per gallon so you're looking at 250 pounds of weight on the back of your quad on top of my unfortunately i'm already up to 225 pounds myself so i've got to work on that i gotta start doing push-ups and sit-ups and stuff again and anyway so you've already got it you know you're looking at around 500 pounds of weight uh on, on this thing uh with a person on it plus an additional 30 40 pounds of weight on the uh, tool rack with uh, the little pump there so but the way i've got it set up is uh, i had that hose around here somewhere here, here it is so i've got a piece of this uh hose you can get this at princess auto i'm sure you could get it at northern tool or harbor freight in the united states and it's uh i think it's just about 20 uh 10 feet in uh length and it's three quarter inch uh inside diameter uh i put my own fittings on it these little zinc couplers are pretty hard to get on because it's thick hose but it's very tough hose as well uh, just try to keep it out of the sun if, if, when you're not using it and of course I've made my own one inch to three quarter inch adapters so I've got a reducer bushing that's this plastic piece here and then I've got the uh, three quarter inch NPT to three quarter inch uh, they're both male fittings uh, three quarter inch garden hose thread fitting right there they're it's just brass it's pretty easy to get a hold of and even with well water it doesn't well, some of my well water isn't the greatest, but it's pretty hard. And then I've got a plain drain nozzle on it. You know, you get these things for 10, 20 bucks wherever you are. And then you've got, you know, different variety. I always have it on a straight bore, so I just like it that you can click on and off. I got the gated Y on there. I might do a bit of a, um, a, a pump to tank sort of thing, just so if the pump's got to run for a while uh it can at least dump back to the tank without cavitating so those boxes are empty i'm gonna use them with my brush pile burning and i've just got the uh, uh little charger battery refresher going on here because so i just put new winch rope on so um and, and also that will also enable me if i wanted to i can run some of my lay flat hose i've got a 50 foot length of this three quarter inch forestry hose i've got regular one inch forestry hose an inch and a half which won't work with this but uh you know the likelihood of me having to do a long hose lay with 20, a 25 gallon tank or likelihood of me doing a, a pulling a draft or anything like that is pretty minimal but i i've got the ability with the 50 foot length of hose there and i've got a 50 foot length of five eighths hose so it's just a little bit smaller and that pump will power 100 feet of hose and no problem. So I'll probably do 200 feet without a problem. It's just how much crap do you want to carry with you. You just want to carry what's essential. So I keep, say, I keep hearing words like that with this COVID crap going on. And anyway, I, uh, I had that toolbox around here somewhere. So anyways, I have had a poly toolbox and the sun's kind of beat the hell out of it. The plastic's become quite brittle over time. And that's what I was keeping on well, here. It is. Yeah, I have lots of stuff back here. And anyway, this is where I've been keeping all my extra fittings and nozzles for all this wildland stuff. And I'll keep it for now, but the plastic's not in the greatest shape. I've had two covers on here, which were kind of nice because you could store little threaded fittings in either one of those and, you know, Teflon tape and whatever else you need, gaskets. But uh they just basically snapped right off i tried to open them and both of them snapped off in my hand so the sun beats the hell out of stuff and even that just the quality of the plastic so i went for a couple of ammunition boxes i've got this bigger one i think this is these ones are actually meant for 762 millimeter by 51 nato standard but uh these were used for blanks or something like that doesn't matter so i'll probably repaint them red or something like that i don't know it doesn't matter and then uh, here's a smaller one. So I'm trying to decide which one I'm going to use. Oh, here's a small one. I think this, these are usually meant for 5.56, five, but uh, it said 7621 there. But either way, it doesn't matter. Um, so I'll clean it up, sand the rust off of it. I got the two for like 12 bucks or something, so it's pretty cheap. They're on sale. But otherwise, they're selling them for like 25 But uh, yeah, I'll get them... Uh, sanded up and repainted 
so people don't think I'm actually carrying ammunition. <laughs> not that's a problem in Canada. <laughs> You're not allowed to have guns, apparently, uh, according to some Frenchmen in uh, Montreal. <laughs> and uh, anyway, uh, so yeah, that's kind of how the project is going. I want to get it up and running soon because we've been getting uh, melting weather lately. It might be in early spring. It's hard to say. It's been uh, we've hardly had any snow yet this winter, so we'll see what March brings us because March can bring a lot of storms. And this is all brush that I've cleared in my yard here, and I uh, burnt the first big heap, and there's another one there. But uh, at some point this spring, I'm gonna be bringing my uh, bringing the excavator from work, ripping out some stumps, uh, leveling some of these piles, sorting out whatever trash that these people tried to bury bef that were in here before us. And I've got another pile in behind the shed there of old tin cans, rusty tin cans, like some of them are old school, those pop tops kind of where you need that little key or whatever to pop the top off. So I cleared the brush from on top of that heap, and uh, once uh, the thawing permanent uh, warmth the weather is here, then I'm cleaning that up with all the other scrap metal I found around here and hauling it to the shredder. So uh, what was uh, garbage to them is going to be a little bit of treasure to me because I think uh, metal scrap prices are 200 bucks per ton or something like that. So... Yeah, that's where this project is going and um, I've put out some brochures to some of the uh, local municipalities to let them know that, you know, I've got this capability, I can invoice them if they need help, I can patrol fire lines, whatever, whatever they need so, sort of thing, uh, if it can be done with uh, with this thing. So I've got a three quarter ton Ford F-250 as well now, four wheel drive diesel. I love this thing. Here it is right there. And I've got a 150-gallon um, tote that I could put on there. And I could use my 2-inch pump. Uh, also use that with fighting grass fires. But a lot of the preference now is towards using uh, ATVs because you get in tighter places and right into the worst spots of the bush, into the swampy areas and that where trucks like mine just get stuck and hopelessly bogged because we've got a lot of that in this area. So, uh, yeah, we'll get this all set up, and I'm hoping if this does work out that in the future I can get a side-by-side. -side. I'm thinking something like a Kawasaki Gator or Honda Pioneer, and uh, then I'll probably go up to 60, maybe 75-gallon tank, just depending on what the weight capacity is. And then I'll get another, I'll probably get an inch and a half pump, uh, like that Honda one. Uh, try and keep my weight low, but try to maximize on water and pressure. So we'll see where it goes. Either that or I'll go with one of these uh, high pressure sprayer pumps. These ones that are uh, like a roller pump or whatever. So talk to you guys later.